The last thing we want to tell you about in this topic is probably the most exciting. And this is what we usually do in research. In fact, the majority of physics investigations focus on identifying two variables and analyzing how they are related. The goal here is to find the value of g. And this is a well-known equation that relates the distance and the time in a free fall experiment. The value of g can then be calculated using the formula 2d over t square. Using this relation, we could simply compute the value of g for each row of measurements and at the end we average them. However, it is often useful to plot the graph of the points because it allows us to identify any trends easier rather than just looking at numbers, especially when the relationship between two variables is unknown. In fact, there are numerous advantages to plotting data into graphs, which we will discuss here. Even though we have known the relationship between distance and time for this example, we will still make a graph of them, and the value of g will be determined graphically. In a graph, the independent variable is plotted on the x-axis, and the dependent variable, which in this case the processed value of mean t square, is plotted on the y-axis. For that reason, we rearrange this equation so that the dependent variable becomes the subject of the equation. The equation is then compared to the equation of the line, y equals mx plus c. But there is no c here, or the y-intercept in this relation, so we expect the line will cross the y-axis at zero. The t-square is the y, plotted on the y-axis. The d is the x, plotted on the x-axis and the gradient m, or the slope, in this case is 2 over g. And here's the graph. The x-axis here represents the height from which the ball is dropped, and this is measured in meters. The y-axis represents the square of the time taken for the ball to fall to the ground. Notice here that each point is plotted with an error bar, because they are all subject to uncertainty. To plot this data, we use Google Spreadsheet in which it is assumed that there are no uncertainties in the x values. That's why we only draw the error bar in the y values, or the uncertainty in t square as we have calculated before. From this set of points, we can draw a best fit line that goes through all the error bars in such a way that minimizes the distance between each point and the line. Google Spreadsheet, which uses the least squares method, can do this for us. This line can also provide us with useful information, such as the gradient, the y-intercept, and the uncertainty in the gradient and the y-intercept. Knowing the gradient, we are now ready to calculate the value of g. Again, from this relation, the gradient m is equal to 2 over g. So the value of g equals 2 over m. By substituting the gradient value 0.2048, we get the value of g, which is 9.766 meters per second squared. What about the y-intercept? What information does this value provide? Google Spreadsheet calculates the y-intercept to be minus 0 0.0001, which is very close to zero. And this was expected from the equation. This value is not exactly equal to zero because the data has random variations. As we can see from the graph, some of the points are above the line of best fit and some are below it. As a result, the y-intercept value is slightly different from zero. Let us now look at each individual point. Suppose that the true value of a quantity in a number line is pointed by this arrow. And these are the results of our measurements. Some are higher than the true value, while others are lower. This kind of error is referred to as a random error, and it is caused by fluctuations in the instrument reading, or how we interpret the reading. Random error affects the result of the measurements in a random manner. We can reduce this error by attempting to take more measurements. But if we get something like this, where the measurements are off by roughly the same amount, this is known as a systematic error. This is caused by things like incorrectly calibrated instruments. As a result, the best fit line will cross the y-axis 
at a value that is different from what was expected. Now let's talk about lines of maximum and minimum gradient. The goal of doing this is to find the uncertainty in the gradient. The uncertainty in gradient is provided for you in Google Spreadsheet, which in this example is equal to 0 0.0086. However, we will not be using this value for the uncertainty in gradient. The reason for this is that when computing uncertainty in gradient, Google Spreadsheet does not take into account the error bars we draw here. As we mentioned before, they draw the best fit line using the least squares method, from which they also calculate the gradient uncertainty. In other words, whether or not we provide the error bars, they will always calculate the uncertainty in gradient and give us the same result. For that reason, to ensure that we take into account these error bars, we will determine the uncertainty in gradient by drawing two lines, one with maximum gradient and the other with minimum gradient. We show you here the data we need to do this. To have a line with minimum gradient, we add two points on the graph. The first point will be the first data plus the uncertainty for that data. In this case, 0 0.10 plus 0 0.03. The second point will be the last data minus the uncertainty for that data, which in this case is 0 0.52 minus 0 0.04. As we can see from the graph, the line connecting these two points in green will have the lowest gradient. The minimum gradient using this method is equal to 0 0.175. With the same method, now we add two points from which we will draw a line with maximum gradient. The first point will be the first data minus the uncertainty for that data, 0 0.10 minus 0 0.03. The second point will be the last data plus the uncertainty for that data. And in this case, 0 0.52 plus 0 0.04. Now we connect these two points in orange, and this way we ensure that the line will have the maximum gradient. The value of the maximum gradient is 0 0.245. From this, we can calculate the uncertainty in gradient by using this formula. Maximum gradient minus minimum gradient divided by 2. Plugging the numbers yields 0 0.035 is uncertainty in gradient. At this point, we should not compare this value to the value provided by Google Spreadsheet because they use different methods and do not include the error bars when calculating the uncertainty in gradient. However, we know that this uncertainty should be reduced. The idea is that the line should go through all the error bars. And take a look at this. The line with the greatest gradient is outside of this error bar. And here's the point. The uncertainty does not have to be exact. The idea is that the gradient or any other results should not be quoted by exactly a single value, but we have to quote them within a range. So we can adjust manually the line so that it goes through all the error bars. And this is my personal approach of doing that. Although these are not the true lines of maximum and minimum gradient, this approach is simple and ensures that the lines pass through all the error bars, not just the first and last error bars and we can still set the gradient within the range. In this approach, instead of adding and subtracting the data with the uncertainties, here we add and subtract the data with half of the uncertainties. This can be seen from the table and the graph. The minimum gradient is now 0 0.1915, and the maximum gradient is 0 0.2265. By substituting these numbers into this equation, we get the gradient uncertainty of 0 0.0175. Now that we know the minimum and maximum gradients, we can calculate the uncertainty in the value of g. Notice that to find the maximum g, we divide 2 by the minimum m, by the minimum gradient, and the minimum is 2 over m maximum. The uncertainty in the value of g is thus g maximum minus g minimum divided by 2. And plugging in the numbers for g max and g min yields 0 
And finally, the value of d obtained graphically is written as 9.766 plus minus 0.805 meters per second squared. Again, the uncertainty is frequently rounded to one significant figure. The value of d is also rounded so that it is consistent with uncertainty. Thus, the value of d is written as 9.8 plus or minus 0.8 meters per second squared.